Well, it's been about a year since the last video on internet for your RV, and in the wireless communications technology world, things change almost every month, let alone in one year. So let's get caught up. In terms of the internet world for the RV traveler, a lot of things have changed, and today I'm gonna to walk you through some of those changes that may significantly impact how you bring internet into your RV. So let's talk about what's happened. Uh, first of all, probably the thing that's on most people's radar is Starlink. And Starlink is going to be obviously a very a big contender for the future, and a lot of my friends and colleagues are actually using them right now. There are a few caveats to using Starlink. Uh, forget about the cost because all of these products seem to cost about the same, but obviously Starlink is a kind of a stationary product in that you have to take it off, you have to put it on a pole or a mount or a tripod. Some people have fashioned special masts to go on their trailer hitch, but you can't travel with it. So two things, you've got to make and break it each time you come into a campground. So you've got to set it up, acquire the satellite signal, which in the beginning could take maybe 15 minutes in the future. It should be a lot quicker, but you can't travel with it and you can't mount it on your roof. Uh, the dish actually pivots and it needs to orient itself to the actual satellite, much like your wine guard system does. But that said, you, you can't just leave it connected to your coach and then go down the road and continue to get a satellite signal. So while some people say, well, I don't care, I have an in-motion TV satellite, that's fine. But the people who want Starlink to actually receive internet signal, this is not going to give you any internet when you've got the Starlink dish packed away in a box in your, uh, your bay. So think about that. Starlink is not the absolute answer for those people who need to be on the go or don't want to set it up and break it down each time. As a backup, it could be very viable. Me personally, it doesn't fit into my routine to be my primary source of internet. Now last year I talked about using a Pepwave Transit Duo and while that is a very good router, and it's a good router for the $1,000, uh, I was running into problems um, in terms of componentry and the way the actual systems are designed internally. But that said, I made a switch eight months ago, or maybe even more actually, to the Cradle Point. Now, Cradle Point is a uh, enterprise, ruggedized, weatherproof router, and it's designed for the most harsh environments, whether it's a fire truck or ambulance or police vehicle. It's meant to be on the go. It's meant to get bounced around and be subjected to moisture. I bought the IBR 1700. Now I want you to understand the IBR 1700, when you look it up, is not their latest offering. It is actually at the top of the food chain in terms of electronic design. So again, my electronic and software engineers tell me that the way the internals are designed on the 1700 is by far and away more powerful than the Transit and actually better than their top of the line, which is the R1900. Now there's a couple caveats. The 1700 as of current, which is September 22, it is not a 5G router. So it will only access you to the LTE carrier. That means that you're not gonna be benefiting from the latest, greatest, most robust network, which is the 5G network, and get the speeds that you would get on a 5G network. You're only gonna get the LTE speeds. Rumor has it that Cradle Point will be coming out with an internal modem that will make it actually a 5G capable modem. And that's what to look out for. Now, if you wanna wait till October to get that, that's great. Otherwise, you can buy the 1700 now, and then later on, you can pop that internal modem out and put in the uh, 5G compatible modem, which is what I intend to do. And then I'll have the uh, fully 5G capable 1700. Let's take a look at how I actually have the 1700 installed. Here it is right here, and I've used these short stubby antennas for the Wi-Fi, and they provide perfect service and ample coverage even outside of the coach. These are the cellular antennas, and half the antennas for the cellular are actually off because I've actually taken one of the modems out, 
the 1700 is fully configurable with Ethernet ports. So it has one pre-configured WAN port and then four more LAN ports that can actually be reconfigured to WAN as well. It's a very robust, very powerful router that can be set up pretty much the way anybody needs to on the road, certainly for an RV. Now, let's talk about the actual carriers and sources. T-Mobile is still at the top of the food chain as far as we're concerned. And we've done testing with T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. And not to get into the intramural uh, arguments of you know, who's better in what particular area, we all know by now that there are areas that every single carrier cannot provide good coverage for. But in general, the systems that T-Mobile has installed are far superior for a number of different reasons than all the other networks. And the purpose of this video is not to get into that, but just to trust us to say, if you're going to look at the overall 5G coverage for the nation, T-Mobile is extremely hard to beat. Since the 1700 router is not a 5G capable router yet, we need to figure out different ways to bring this in. Now we've actually taken a Insego 5G hotspot and wired it in through an ethernet bridge into the cradle point and that's worked very well. However, there are some availability that you can get a T-Mobile home internet gateway for your actual physical location. So for those of you who are uh, basically full-timing or living in a residence that is able to get a T-Mobile home internet gateway, that is right now about the best you can get. Why? Because it is a very powerful radio system inside it. It's got a full three watt radio in there. And so it's gonna you know, really punch out with a lot stronger signal. It has obviously better antennas built into it. It's optimized for T-Mobile's network. So if you can get your hands on one of those, that's the way to go. Let's take a look and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is what the T-Mobile home internet gateway looks like. It's a cube that um, is probably about, you know, a four inch by four inch cube by about, you know, eight or 10 inches tall. And it fits nice neatly in the compartment. It connects directly to the router via the ethernet cable. That ethernet cable plugs right into the WAN port on the 1700 router. As of right now, T-Mobile provides these to qualified addresses. And if you qualify for that, then you can get a home internet gateway from T-Mobile. We also have a Verizon home internet gateway, and that's a 5G internet gateway. And you can do the same thing. You can plug that into the WAN port, or you can plug the T-Mobile into the WAN port and get a Verizon backup and plug that into one of the LAN ports and then actually reconfigure that LAN port in the Cradle Point software to be another WAN port. And this is working right now with one of our test installs extremely well. So you've got the enjoyment of having a T-Mobile and a Verizon 5G service put into your coach. So let's recap the options that are here today, September 2022. And that is the best in class of routers is in our opinion, the Cradle Point in this case, the IBR 1700, that is an LTE router. You can put a T-Mobile SIM in there. You can put an AT&T SIM in there. You can put a Verizon SIM in there. That's up to you. As I've recommended to many people, probably the most cost-effective way to do this is to get an add-on SIM card. Now, I wanna tell you about putting an add-on SIM card into a Cradle Point. The Cradle Point is not a registered device in terms of the carriers recognizing that as a mobile device. So what you're going to run into is you're gonna have a lockdown and you're gonna to try to get a T-Mobile add-on SIM that is maybe for a tablet um, or even a phone for that matter and plug it in to your cradle point and your, your cradle point's gonna send out the signal to T-Mobile, T-Mobile's network software is gonna say, nope, I don't recognize that. Either it's gonna lock it out or it's gonna throttle it down to virtually nothing. You're not gonna have any um, capability on that SIM card whatsoever. How do you work through that? This is not a workaround. This is actually the way you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to get a full-blown hotspot or bring your own internet or mobile internet plan, whatever the terminology is for the certain carrier. 
you cannot, and I said before last year, you cannot expect to walk in to any one of the wireless stores and say, hello, I have a cradle point router in my motorhome. I'd like to have a SIM card for it. They're not gonna have a clue what you're talking about. They're gonna give you the wrong thing. And as I've had some friends do, they went into a store and they told them they tried to explain what they want to do and that salesman got all goofed up and they end up disabling another one of their devices and they couldn't do work on their other device because they actually swapped the SIM card numbers over and they disabled the other SIM and it was just a complete mess. So I'm going to emphatically tell you do not go into your carrier store and say what you think you have clear in your mind to them because they're not going to understand it. What you're going to have to have is you're going to have to buy a full-fledged mobile hotspot SIM card or a bring your own internet SIM card. It's got to be an internet plan SIM card. So it cannot be a tablet add-on like the T-Mobile add-on. So bringing you up to speed, we've got basically a few different uh, updates, if you will, as to internet into your RV. Number one is Starlink. Uh, keep your eye on Starlink. Their latest development is that they're going to partner up with T-Mobile to bring data services through the Starlink network and T-Mobile network. And that's gonna really be very interesting because what that's gonna enable to you to do is to have the coverage with data services. It's, it's gonna be a real game changer, so keep your eye on that. The other thing is we've got 5G technology coming to the Cradle Point IBR 1700, and that's supposedly coming this fall. And the last one is the newest home internet gateways. You have to make sure you get a 5G home internet gateway. You have to make sure that you're qualified to get one of those for your stationary residence, if you will. In other words, what they're trying to do with these carriers is they're trying to keep the services within their infrastructure under control. And that happens with Starlink, Verizon, T-Mobile. They don't want to send out a, a whole ton of internet gateways into a certain area and saturate the network to the point where no one is getting good service. So hopefully this helps you, it brings you up to speed, and as the saying goes with computers and technology, stick around because next month it's all going to be changed. So I'm sure this will not be the last of the videos to come, and if you have any questions, drop them below, uh, comments as well, drop them below. I appreciate you subscribing and I appreciate the comments and the positive feedback. Take care and safe travels as always.